Hello, everyone. This is Eileen from Long Beach Public Library. How is everybody today? Okay. It's good Hello. to see everyone. So today is part three of Long Beach Celebrities. Um, this has been a very, very, very intense research project. I actually, I, I couldn't even finish because um, there's so many more people that I need to cover. I would need another two or three months to get through this research. So I did a, um, a culmination at the end so we could cover some of the people that I couldn't finish, um, but they will still be spoken about. And basically we're gonna start the part three with Governor Hugh Carey. Now it's interesting, someone had told me that he had lived here, but I didn't really know where to begin because his terms being in government and having such a long history in New York, um, I just didn't know where to start. But I found an article written by Jerry Kremer and Jerry Kremer just put it right out there and said, look, he's a Long Island person. He lived in Long Beach with his family. And I was like, well, there's what I needed right there. Um, it wasn't so easy to trace him, um, but he is a true native of Long Island. And of course, when he did pass away, he was living out in Shelter Island with his family. Um, he served um, in the service. He was in Congress from 61 to 74. He, of course, he was our governor till 82. And he established many, many programs. And New York at that time when he became governor um, was in very bad dire straits. So I'm um, glad to have found out that he was a Long Beach person because it made my day. Um, thanks, Mr. Kremer, for your article because it established um, that he could be part of my Long Beach program today. This gentleman, Les Crane, I found a, um, a mention of him being um, a Long Beach person. And at the beginning, I couldn't make the connection, but someone had said um, in an article that he did, he graduated school here in 51. And then I did find an article where his daughter said that he did graduate high school here. He was born in New York and that basically his name was Leslie Stein. I called Harvey Wiesenberg last night because I said to Mr. Wiesenberg, I said, I know your class of 52. Do you remember Leslie Stein? And he said, of course I did. Um, they were very good friends. So it's very interesting. You see his yearbook photo. And of course um, he was in service. And of course, his titled show um, on ABC was canceled in 65, but he was an advocate for civil rights. He was an advocate for so many people. And he, um, of course, Les Crane, um, graduated in 1951. Um, very good research. I mean, I would not have found him so easily if it hadn't been for his daughter. So his daughter actually gave me the clues to look up Leslie Stein and the photo was donated by his family. Doc, the doctor, Julius Irving, he, of course, um, lived in the Lido townhouse. Um, he was an NBA uh, all-star um, basketball player. He played for the Nets, and he had such a championship um, background in basketball. Um, of course, he's not a born person from Long Beach, but he did live here for a short while. And I think he did go to Roosevelt High School, so he wasn't far, far away from here. So doc, the doctor, Burl Ives, who would ever have thought that Burl Ives lived in Long Beach? The reason I found Mr. Ives is because he was married to a scriptwriter, and her name kind of piqued my interest because Helen Peck Ehrlich, Arthur Ehrlich was the first board chairman of the Long Beach Public Library. And in 1925, before the library was established in 28, he was one of the people that along with Max Peck started the library as a public library in Long Beach. There was no library here. The library didn't come out until almost 10 years after the school district was established in 1914. So I did a little digging and sure enough, 
Mr. Burl Ives was married to um, Arthur Ehrlich, who was on the board of trustees for the Long Beach Library. He was married to his daughter. And of course, I know him and well known for Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And um, he was on billboard charts and he had a very successful career as a recording artist and guitarist. Um, so I thought that was a very interesting. Their family lived on Belmont Avenue. Richard Han Hanley, I can see if I could say this right, Jack Hell. He was an actor in film and television um, in 34. So he was actually born here in Long Beach Hospital, but he didn't stay here. His family moved out to LA, and of course, he became a very, very successful actor. Dr. J, Derek Jeter, a New York, New York Yankees shortstop. Um, they say he lived here. I'm not sure where he lived, but you can't argue with the public. The public says Derek Jeter, he, he lived in Long Beach, so let's see. Um, I couldn't find a, I couldn't find a documentation anywhere, but we're going to go with the public. He, he lived at 10 West Broadway. Ah, was, so Joe knows 10 West Broadway. Uh, it, it was a rental. Okay. He was supposed to buy, but he did change his mind. Oh, uh, <laughs> and Joan Jett, of course, um, one of, uh, my contemporaries, because I went to high school when she was very, very, very popular. Um, she's been seen in Long Beach. She lives up on Shore Road. She's been a great presence in Long Beach. Um, she's still around and I really, really, really loved her. Uh, mm -hmm. Her music, I grew up with her music. So this is my era. Um, so Joan Jett, Long Beach, New York. 420 Shore Road, she lives. <laughs> uh, don't give away the secrets, Joe. That's okay. That's what the library is all about, secrets. <laughs> Pete, Pete Johnson. Pete Johnson is a very, very interesting young man at that time. He um, was picked up uh, football for the Cincinnati Bengals. He was former NFL running back. He moved to Long Beach in 71. So basically, he graduated in 72. He had been living down south with his family. I think his grandmother had passed away, came back up, lived in New York, only spent a year in high school here and got picked up for um, the NFL. So he did really, really well. Um, he was a great, great, great NFL player. And of course, only here for a very short time, but he did very good for himself. This gentleman, I'm not even going to attempt to say his name because he's got a very long Hawaiian name, but everybody knew him as the Duke. And of course, he was born in the kingdom of Hawaii near Waikiki, and everybody knows him as the father of surfing. Now, the reason why I came about the Duke is because a gentleman way back, I'd say in maybe mid like 214 or 215, contacted the library looking for information about him that did he surf in Long Beach. And with all the extensive research I had done, I could not find him surfing in Long Beach. But I did find that he was here. He was an Olympic gold swimmer. And he came to swim here in our pool. He actually swam with um, Harold Kruger. He actually swam with many, many people at the Olympia pool. And basically he came here for a couple of years diff at different times. So he was here and he swam here, but he never surfed here, but he was the father of surfing. Charles Krathammer, um, he was a person that lived in, raised up in Montreal, Canada, but it seems that he spent long summers in Long Beach. He lived on Monroe Boulevard. Of course, he was a political columnist, uh, author, speechwriter, and psychiatrist. Now we all know that he was wheelchair bound and it seems that he had been paralyzed in an accident. He was in a diving accident and paralyzed first from the neck down. And of course with therapy, he became only from waist down. But in 87, he won a Pulitzer Prize he never gave up, and his book, 
that matter. Three decades of passion, pastimes, and politics. Harold Stubby Kruger, we just spoke about him with the Duke. He was a champion Olympic swimmer. He also swam at the Olympic pool, but unlike the Duke, he actually lived here for a little bit more time, not just coming back and forth to do shows and to be on an exhibition, but he actually was on the Long Beach Patrol. If you could read the back of his board, it says Stubby Kruger and it says Olympia Long Beach, which is the pool he swam at. On his shirt says Long Beach Patrol. So he was actually on the lifeguards for the city, you know, for Long Beach back in the 20s. So that just not made him a visitor swimming in our pools, but also that he was working here as, an, as a lifeguard back in the 20s. So I thought that was very interesting. John Lennon grew up in Long Beach. He loved the Yankees. He went to Chaminade High School. He was a left-handed pitcher from the Washington Nationals for six seasons. He signed a contract for Philadelphia, went to the Mets. And then, of course, now he is a coach for the Buffalo Bisons. This young man, um, he passed away in 217. He was a rapper, singer, songwriter. He did modeling. He was a creator of a new music genre called EMO rap. His little, um, his, his name is Little Peep, of course, but that's his, his stage name. He wrote a lot of music um, and his, his music dealt with a lot with, de with depression and anxiety and drug abuse and suicide. Um, it, it's, it's amazing that how he put so much into his music and the tragedy of his loss that he died. And it was his depression, unfortunate. Alad K. Lowenstein, he graduated law at Yale. He taught at Stanford, North Carolina. He was a US representative. He fought for human rights. He was on everything that I have ever done research. He tried to stop the noise um, coming over like the, um, I remember the airplane that used to pass my house on the Concorde. I mean, he had so much things and projects that he tried to work on when he was in office. We actually hold some of his papers um, at the Lowenstein Collection and the main library at one point, I don't remember exactly what year, the main library's uh, branch name was after our K. Lowenstein. Right. Um, and the citizen documentary, um, we do have a copy at the library in our local history, but you can actually watch the whole thing. It's on YouTube. So you can actually, um, you can mm -hmm. just probably listen to it if you want to listen to the whole thing. It's on YouTube. Francis, and I'm troublesome with names and I hate to say them and then I say them wrong, but this young person um, was an American professional basketball player. He was the original, and I say original, before the Knicks even existed. He was the New York Knicks second half 1946 premier in professional men's basketball league. So that was, he was the first person to play on the, in the Knicks. Um, he lived here. He played in New York high schools. He was point guard. Um, and he became athletic director of Oceanside School District. Charles McAvoy. The McAvoy family, everybody knows in Long Beach is the plumbing business. Um, they started here back in 1926. This young man was signed three-year contract with the Boston Bruins. Um, he is now one of the top league defensemen for National Hockey League. So as a young boy, he was an amazing, amazing skater and loved to play hockey. And there he is. Very successful. Sean Manahan, Long Beach High School graduate, 99, professional lightweight, heavy class uh, boxer, 
New York Golden Gloves amateur at Madison Square Garden in 2009, had a professional record of 29 wins, 17 by knockouts, three losses. Um, he retired, of course, from boxing, but he's still a Long Beach person. This gentleman was very interesting. His name is George Morehouse. He was born in England, and I had had a question about him because he was actually an assistant postmaster uh, for Long Beach, and he was in an accident, and he passed away while he was in be a postmaster. When I looked him up, he was an actual professional football, and they don't call uh, football is soccer um, in in. The Caribbean is soccer and in overseas it's soccer, but he was a professional soccer player. And I went on to the um, census. And when he emigrated to the United States, his work was that he was a professional soccer player. And I thought that was interesting. And then he came to Long Beach, of course, and he worked for our post uh, postal service. And New York, he was in the New York Guard also in 1942. You never know what you're going to find out about a person when you look them up. This gentleman is a very, very, very famous screenwriter, director, producer, um, born in the Bronx, lived in New York City on Riverside Drive, uh, but his family came to live in Long Beach in the summers, 160 Riverside Boulevard. And he basically um, lived here on and off. And he was an amazing, amazing person. Director for, he best director for All the President's Men, adapted screenplay Sophie's Choice in 82. This band, when I was young, I loved to go see them. They were called Primo. And in the band of Primo, of course, is Bernard Soto. He was class of 72. Um, he played percussion. Um, he has since passed away. What a, what a, a young man, very talented. We had uh, Jerry Ekins on keyboard. And of course, Dean Brown on guitar, who um, always plays at the Jazz Fest and passed at the library and Shyla Deal, who's a, a world-renowned bassist. Um, they played, I remember as a kid, um, at Carol's Place in Island Park. Um, they did. The, they always played at the beach. Um, great band, and so sorry that Bernard had passed away. He was such a, a, a good, good percussionist. And I do get to the library to see Dean Brown when they perform at the library. Don Rickles, who would ever think that Don Rickles lived in Long Beach? Well, this stand-up comedian and actor, um, night, uh, nightclub performer, um, lived in Long Beach with his mom in the 50s. And he basically quoted him in, in the newspaper in Newsday. He said, we had an apartment. I worked in a lot of places in Long Beach in those days. And then many of them were country clubs. And I used to work on the beaches doing comedy. Mm -hmm. So that was in the Newsday in 2010. So he gave a shout out to Long Beach. And of course, um, this photograph is when he did Mr. Warmth on the Don Rickles HBO program. Very funny guy. Phil Alden Robinson. He was born in New York in 1950. He was a film director and screenwriter, of course, um, one of his best known films is Field of Dreams. Um, his um, accomplishments, too much to fit onto this page. Um, of course, Band of Brothers, his miniseries. Um, he had a best screenplay adaptation for best picture in 2002 and he won an Emmy Award. Um, it's amazing how many people in Long Beach have oh. become very famous. Yeah. William Penn Adair Rogers. Now, what can I find out about this gentleman? Not too much. He was born in Oklahoma of Cherokee ancestry. He was an American stage and film actor, vaudeville performer, humorist, cowboy, columnist, social commentator. Of course, in one of 
the books written about Long Beach, they said that he lived here. Now, this is my debate always. Did he live here or did he come here for the day and they said he lived here? Not very sure, but I do like the quote. It said, he said, one of the next things we're gonna do is to take Long Beach into the United States. So that is very, very profound. He wants to make Long Beach part of the US. Um, that was his statement, but not enough to prove to me that he lived here. So if anybody knows if he really did and they could tell me how they know, I'd, I'd say definitely that he did, but this is a, a maybe. Telly Savalas, I like Telly Savalas, not because he's Greek, um, but he was, I loved him on TV. And as a kid, I used to go to swim at Nassau Beach, which is now Nickerson in Lido. And he used to swim there all the time. It never thought in my mind that he actually might've lived here though. So he was born in Garden City. He graduated school in Floral Park. He was an excellent swimmer. He was a lifeguard. He was an actor best known for portraying, of course, Theo Kojak on the drama series Kojak, Who Loves You Baby? He won an Emmy and two Golden Globes for Best Actor in a Drama and Series on CBS filmed in New York City. So I think he could have lived down here. Again, I can't prove it, but as a child growing up, they kicked us out of the pool so Telly Savalas could swim at Nickerson, which was then Nassau Beach. This is a great, great story. Everybody said Lillian Roth lived in Long Beach. So we track her down to this beautiful house, which is at 657 Laurelton Boulevard. And it just so happens yeah. she married Judge Benjamin Shalek. She was a Broadway film actress and very well known for her biography, I'll Cry, for, you know, Cry Tomorrow, back in 54. Now, when I looked up the property, it was then owned in around 1939-ish until that point by Joseph Shalek. Now, Joseph Shalek was her brother-in-law. So they actually didn't own the house, but their bro brother-in-law owned the house. And it was sold in around about 39. And I think that's when they were actually divorced. So, um, so yes, she probably did live there for that time period. But after 39, they didn't live there anymore. The house was sold. This is currently the steel estate. And I'm very right. sad because my brother just told me that the house is up for sale. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful house looking overlooking the bay on West Bay Drive. Um, it's, it's, just, it's, it's just amazing. Um, I hope that somebody takes it and takes care of it and preserves it. Um, I, do, though, I do beg to differ though that she drove, wrote her biography there because if the house was sold from their family in 39 and she wrote her bio in the 50s, I don't think that happened there, but always a story is a story. Right. Stanley Reynolds was there a few summers, whether you rented it or whatever, but he was there. Oh, I just passed my other one. I'm sorry, I just missed one. Okay, we'll have to go forward because I don't want to go back to repeat. Okay, Pete Stemankowski. Um, this gentleman was a New York Ranger for 15 seasons. He played for the New York Rangers, the Toronto Maple Leafs, Detroit Red Wings, Los Angeles Kings. He's remembered for his overtime goal in the game six of the 70 to 71 Stanley Cup in semifinals. And now, and still does, coach the Long Beach Sharks. And he's a development and scouting person for, for, for hockey. Now, interesting enough, this gentleman comes into the library. I see him almost every day had no idea that he was a ranger. He wears a ranger hat, but you know, people wear sports hats. You would never think that he was really a player for this New York Rangers. So one day Harvey Wiesenberg comes in and he goes, hey Stemma. And I'm like, Mr. Wiesenberg, you know him? He goes, oh yeah, don't you know who he is? I'm like, well, not quite, but um, very interesting. He introduced me formally to him because I see him every day at the library. He uses a computer. And um, of course I said, can I take your picture for my program? And he says, of course. And there's Mr. Wiesenberg and Mr. Semenskowski of the New York Rangers. 
um, back in the 70s, and he's at the Long Beach Public Library on October 8th, 2021, our patron, and uh, there he was. So you never know who is there, and you don't know who's around you. How do you like that? New York Ranger. I've been taking and waiting on him and saying hi to him for a long time. I didn't know who he was. <laughs> Rudolf Valentino. I probably should have started with Z working backwards because this one was a very, very, very difficult one. He has a long, long history and a lot of history that's not exactly fitting together. I would have to be a detective in, in many, many hours to kind of come up with an exact story for him. But in the New York Times, they do quote that he was dancing the tango at Healy's Casino, which is on the boardwalk by Long Beach Boulevard. And I do have other people saying that he lived in the house at 215 West Penn Street. Of course, those records are not coming up because they're prior to um, tax records for that time period, which would be in the early, probably around 1915 or so. So I don't know if he actually had that house. I'm not actually sure if he ever lived in that house. He definitely lived in Manhattan um, when he went to apply for his citizenship. He actually lived at 275 Park Avenue in New York City. I do know that he did dance with a famous dancer, Joan Sawyer. She did dance out here in the early 1915s or so. I know that he emigrated from Italy. He became a very, very, very successful um, actor. He was a wonderful dancer and he had a very, very short life. But again, I can't come up with an exact with him because his time frame, where it's early 1915 to 1917 is a little bit fuzzy. And there's a lot of contradiction um, and he had a lot of stuff going on also as well um, at that time. So I'll, I'll just give him one up for the, that he could have been dancing because I saw one citation that he didn't dance at Healy's, but he danced at the Castle Theater. Yes. So that might be the segue that he danced at the Castle's in around 2.15 or so. I could see that. But again, documentation is a little bit fuzzy. But I'd love to have Rudy Valentino as a Long Beachite. This is so cool. Well, um, I was in that house when I was in the city and Italians owned it. And they said somebody famous lived here at one time. So That's I'm just throwing that in. It, I, I, I was young, so I didn't remember the name. Maybe it was Valentino, but they told me a famous Italian people lived here. Right. So it was, again, because of documentation with, with records of homes that were built in the early yes. 1915s, 1917, those are the early, early rentals houses. Mm -hmm. the, nothing after, before 1930, there's really no documentation um, on those houses at this moment. At least I don't have access to them. It doesn't mean that they don't exist. We just don't have access to that. Another house, which is up for debate, is the 164 Monroe Boulevard with the Spanish colored tiled roof. I mean, I mean, I'm 57 and I've always known and everybody has always told me that Rudy Valley lived there. Um, he was a famous American singer, film star, band leader. Um, he opened up the nightclub in New York City. He was a very, very famous, famous um, musician. Um, for RKO, he was a recording artist. I mean, everybody knows Rudy Valley. Yes. Again, did he really live in that house? Can't say, because we just don't have the know-how, the documentation. But these are great stories. It's part of our history. It's an oral history that's passed down to us. He might have lived here. I don't think he, you know, he could have lived here. So. I'd say, let's go for it. Everybody remembers him for his megaphone because he used to use a megaphone to make him sound louder. And he did, of course, play sax. Um, Rudy Valley, Monroe Boulevard. Yes. 
stick them in Patton. One of my um, patrons who comes on my program said, she, he sent me an email, uh, Bob Mars, thank you. He said, you know, in the summer of 55, Dick Van Patten lived on Indiana and Ocean View Avenue. Not sure if he stayed after that summer, but I remember that he was here. And he said that he remembers him that saying that he has a part in I Remember Mama. And of course he was in I Remember Mama. And of course he said he drove a Dodge Royal Lancer or some kind of a Dodge model in that category. So this is somebody who emailed me about Dick Van Patten. So I loved him in Eight is Enough, of course, because I'm a, I was a little youngster watching TV at that point. But he had a great, great um, movie history, television appearances. And of course, he passed away in 215. He was born in Kew Gardens, which is not far from here. So I could see him coming down to live in Long Beach. He was on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and um, he was a good actor. Gregory Van Roten, um, 1990, he went to Chaminade. They say he lived in Long Beach, probably did, or he could have lived in Lido. He was in New York Jets. He was in National Football League. So I could see that happening, absolutely. We have a lot of sports people down here and probably more um, Rangers and more people from different teams over the years. Um, it's just a huge amount of people that just live down here. Johnny Weissmiller, he's another one. He was a big Olympic swimming. He swam in the Olympia pool along with the Duke, Eleanor Holm. He um, actually, he actually broke the Duke's record for the swimming in the Olympics. He beat their record. Now I did find him down here, multiple summers swimming here at the Olympia. I found him in documentation reaching back 1923 all the way to 1928. And of course, um, he sat, swam with Eleanor Holm in Billy Rose's arcade in the 39 World's Fair. I love Johnny Weissmiller and I love him portraying Tarzan and he did break many, many records. John Wilder, um, he has a building down in West Beach Street. His home was at 236 West Olive Street. Um, he was US House of Representatives and I documented him with no problem. He's on the state census in 25. He's on the federal census with his family from 1930 and 1940. And he was in the service from 42 to 45. Yep. Documentation, documentation, documentation. I know this gentleman lived here. It's on multiple records on the census. It's got multiple records for him being in the military and his family lived here. And everything is very, very easy to say, I know this gentleman lived here. The other people, it's a little bit more hard because they're not anywhere documented except for people saying that they lived here or witness that they saw them live here. So I love it when I can find a document like his registration card here. It says where he lived, it gives his, his address, his family, everything is on here. It's great. Yes. And the building. Yep. Now this young lady, she was just on the front cover of the Herald. She's um, been in, living in Point Lookout with her family and you know, my program is not just about superstar people from Hollywood, but this young woman um, has many, and I say many, you could see her records are amazing from 2003 all the way till this past year in Tokyo, Japan, winning gold and silver and bronze medals in the Paralympics. Now the first Paralympics that I was aware of, and I was actually there that year, is in 2004, because I was in Greece. Um, she was born and raised in Arizona. She played soccer, she played basketball, she played volleyball. She was an amazing, amazing athlete. At age 11, she got diagnosed with cancer in her left tibia. And of course, her surgery had made her leg, um, they took parts and remnants of her femur and whatever they did with her surgery, she has a very unusual 
um, way that they put her leg back together. And she's wearing a prosthetic that she did not give up. She kept going. She learned to play and she became not only the best, but the best of the best in athletics, playing volleyball seated and doing her, her life, living with her family and raising her children. I think she has three children and they're still current residents at Long Beach. Um, I'm sorry, in Point Lookout. And as I said, she was on the front cover of the Herald. So I had to add her into my program for today um, because that's amazing. You don't let anything get you down. And this person is pure example of that. Now, this is for the barrier island of Long Beach, could cover Lido Beach Point Lookout. These are people that I'm going to put on my list that they lived here um, at some point in time. And we start with John B. Cullen, CEO of King Cullen Supermarkets, um, Point Lookout resident, Jack Dempsey, professional boxer, Amy Fisher at some point after her turmoil lived in Long Beach. Um, you have Emil Francis, a uh, coach for the New York Rangers. He lived here. Larry Garrison, film and television producer. Ron Gilbert, Hall of Famer for the New York Rangers. They called him Mr. Ranger. Jane Gill, fashion model at age 16. She was on the cover of Vogue. James Joseph Hines, politician. Most powerful in Tammany Hall politics. Juliet Huddy television news journalist, Hal Cantor, primetime Emmy Award writer, producer, and director. Brennan Edward Savage, American rapper and close friend of Lil Peep. Laverne Tart, American basketball, played for the New York Nets from 68 to 71. You could see I could needed another like a couple of months to do this. This is a, a donation from the Lido Dune Civic Association. Um, Carol Burnett lived in Pinehurst in the early 60s. Nathan Goodman, he was the owner of Spidel Watch and Band. He lived in the Pink Castle on Luchon. Gregory Hines, I didn't know this, lived in the Pink Castle on Luchon. Oliver Jennings, he lived on Royat Street with my other famous, famous person, Lester Capel. Um, <laughs> Dr. Kenneth Metcalf, a leading physician, um, pediatrics lived on Bear, Bear Ritz. Cole Porter lived on Matlock. Love Cole Porter. Thank you for being here for a short while. Arnie Rosen, um, he lived on Royette. And speaking of Lester Capel, he said that was his third cousin to his mom. William B. Williams, radio personality on WNEW, lived on Luchon and, and Lido Boulevard. And Sarah Beth of Sarah Beth's Kitchen, um, she lived on Woodhill. Now, they say they lived here. Is this myth or fact? So this is my closing pose. Myth or fact? Humphrey Bogart, screen star, stage actor, lived in Manhattan. Jack Benny, vaudevillian, violinist, Chicago, New York. He lived in California. Jaron Barrymore, American stage actor, screen and radio. Fanny Bryce, Manhattan townhouse she had on 76th Street. She had a summer home in Huntington, moved to Los Angeles and was married to Billy Rose in 29. James Cagney, actor, dancer, both on stage and on screen. Joel Gray, stage actor. And I love him in Cabaret. Joe, you love him in Cabaret? Money, money. Paulette money, Goddard. Money, money. <laughs> Paulette money, money. Goddard. Pauline Marion Levy, born in Long Island. She was a child model. She was a Ziegfeld girl, screen and stage actor. <laughs> Lee Joel, singer, pianist, songwriter. We all know him so well. Guy Lombardo, band leader, businessman, restaurant owner. He published his own music, theatrical producer, champion speedboat racer. I seen pictures of him racing his boat up and down Reynolds Channel. Did he live here? Richard Masseur, American character actor. Joan Namath, American Football League, National League, New York Jets, 65 to 76. Robert Redford, 
director, activist, two-time Academy Award winner, Edward G. Robinson, Emmanuel Goldenberg, American actor of stage and screen, Paul Sorvino, American actor, opera singer, business band, writer, and sculptor. Think about it. Did these people really live here? Or did they just come for a short while and, and, and left? Now, I do know Guy Lombardo did live in Freeport. So I know he's in the Freeport um, history, local history. And I do know that he did ride his boat down uh, Reynolds Channel. I am not sure about anybody else if they actually lived here or not. So that's why do we say, did they live here, myth or fact? This is my tidbit. Billy Rose was married to Eleanor Holm from 39 to 54. She also swam with Weissmiller and Stubby Kruger at the Olympia pool in the 20s. Eleanor Holm starred in Billy Rose's Aquacade with Johnny Weissmiller in the Great Lace Exposition in 37. There's all these people who have a lot of connections. So it's interesting how they are all connected. It's amazing. Now, when you read and you go online and you try to look up some of these people, the ones that we were trying to figure out if they lived here or not, in every one of these citations, and some of them are not just a hearsay, I'm talking about the New York Times. I am talking about newspapers ha that have, here's the Gutenberg Project. This is saying in almost every single one of these that Clara Bow lived here and James Cagney lived here and, and John Barrymore lived here. I mean, if you read every single one of them, it's exactly copied word for word who lived here. And every single one of these articles, they've been published saying that these people lived here. I could not prove one way or the other that they did. So it's a very interesting thing that over time, it just becomes part of the folklore of our, our community. It becomes the folklore. And I don't think they put any more research into it than going to one article that's already documented and saying the same exact thing. They print it and no one ever debates it because it's happened so long ago. And that is the end of my share.